Welcome back, everyone. The story is continuing as they broke through time and space to whatever they are in now. Upon doing that, they met up with the old heroes, the good old days when they were destroying the threats that were at hand. But now, they ended up going to Pantheon again through the means of Hendrix using his magic to teleport. Now... Now being back, they ended up going to the Highland Manor, and they were there. They ended up relaxing with the, one of the older men that used to run over the family that now resides there and are currently against them. And when they did, they all went to rest after debating on telling all of their guests information about them and their future. Returning now is all of them. Okay, so, so, first person that I need Rick. As you are laying there, you slowly start hearing the sound of what is boards. Just, and then shatters as your whole body falls and your eyes open. And you're laying in just a broken bed with a whole bunch of cobwebs up above you. What the fuck? He's like... Who's sort of turtle rolling a little bit because he is a really big guy and he's got a lot of weight on his back. So, like, he's sort of rocking back and forth oh. in a turtle roll as he tries to get up. With every, like, turn, you actually hear more boards just breaking apart. Until eventually the bed is laying on the ground and you're surrounded by broken pieces of the bed frame. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. So I'm going to get up and I'm going to move out. So doing that, you immediately are hit with tons and tons and tons of spider webs, as if they covered you for probably about a hundred years without you noticing. I'm going to like, I'm going to get it off and I'm going to do like the, uh, the handshaking thing. Like I'm trying to get, uh, something off of me, like water or something. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Ugh, it's so gross. Oh my God. Right. So, the next person that would end up waking up would be probably the one that was closest, which was Claudius. Claudius, you wake up and your, like, clothing is stuck to the bed as you have to slowly tear it off. You notice that pieces of it seem to have, like, molded onto it. Mm. Do I have any packs with me with clothes in them? No, like, your clothes aren't damaged, it was just they were stuck, so you had to pull them up. I'm gonna go ahead and try to stand up and, like, brush my clothes off. So, you're able to get whatever was stuck on the mattress and you off, but you're walking into a ton of spider webs as well. I'm gonna go ahead and try to, like, sweep away the room and, like, op start opening the room. Okay. And then Why I'd like to walk into the hallway. Okay. About the same time as you open up your door, you feel like the not break off as you're, you push it open. Rick, you also had the same issue, only yours just fell over. So all of so, you hear Doom! I didn't hear Rick thrashing about first, being right next to him. How rude. Claudius was right next to him. 15, yeah, 20. I'm right here. Yeah, you're 20 feet. He was 15. You can hear him, but by the you time that all that happens, terrible. by the time that all that happens, you're just now waking up. So I'm waking up. Do I notice that I have, like, fallen through the bed onto the floor? Technically, you are still on the bed. But the but moment that like you... Collapse? Not yet. But when you move, that's when it falls and your whole bed shifts and you slam kind of like into the wall. Just... Okay. The most subtle okay. of movement did it. I'm gonna pick myself up. Brush myself off. Uh, step over everything here. I, yeah, I'm just going to, like, walk through it. I'm not even going to try and walk over. I'm just going to walk through everything and kick it. All right, so you're kicking the wood away. The webs are going around your face and all that. I'm going to push the, like, just put my hand against the door and push it. What happens? Uh, it actually just uh, swings open. doesn't break off. Is he is he within arm's reach of me? Yeah. I still have all the cobwebs on my hand, right? Sure. I'm gonna wipe it all over his uh, armor. That's already covered in cobwebs. 
Yes. Yeah, so I'm, I'm trying to get it off my hands, okay? Like, look, I'm going to wipe it on his armor and anywhere I don't see cobwebs. Okay. And I'm going to I'm gonna look to Rick and say, that's not a nice thing to do, meow. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's oh. right. I got to have it do this. What do I roll? What do I roll? Do I, yeah. do I see him as a cat? He has features of a cat. He isn't a full cat, though. <clears throat> he looks kind of like half cat, half man. I'm not re-rolling. <laughs> you can try it. You can try it, bitch, but that's my roll. <laughs> For what? You can try it. I know you want to, but that's my roll. <laughs> For what? Pick him up or something? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Trying to pick me up. That's my role. Um, he doesn't see you as a cat. He sees you as like half man, half cat. What? Yeah. Like there's cat like features so, on him. A furry man, if you will. Almost like a were cat. I'm not. <laughs> 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 That's all I want. <laughs> so, that happens. Claudius, what are you doing over there? Yeah, I'm just gonna walk out. Um, do I see Oscar? Uh, Rick? there's stairs blocking your way while they're doing their thing. I'm going to start walking out. <clears throat> Can I hear them moving around? Yeah, you see them now. Once you step over there, you see them, like, okay. fighting as he's, like, pushing it on there and he says meow to him. Okay, I'm just going to walk over there very confused as to why they're meowing and wonder if they have a kinky. Do I see... Do I see Claudius yeah. as a cat? No, you see him as kind of like an owl person. And who are you? I just going to say they're very unamused. I am going to try and capture him. So I'm going to, I'm going to like crouch down like a cat and then I'm going to shake my bottom and jump at him. Shake your bottom. I'm going to punch Rick in the face. Like a cat. All right. Roll an arm strike. You're going to twerk before you jump at him. It'd be 20. Does 20 break your AC? Why would it be 20? Because he has advantage because you're crouched down, technically prone. I'm not prone, though. You're about to pounce on him. He literally can just swing his arm slightly to hit you. Does a 20 hit, though? Yeah, I don't think it does either, but... I'm at... I have exactly 20. Roll damage. That's Wait, Iron hold Fist. On. That's Iron Fist. You don't roll Iron Fist. <laughs> hold on. Iron Fist. Wait, hold on. Do I notice Claudius is trying to punch him? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so that's a bonus action. It wouldn't be your turn once Claudius is doing that. Oh my god, so I can't cast yeah, that? Shield is a reaction, though. I I punch him, can I walk away? Yeah, don't do the Iron Fist doesn't proc though. Okay, I'm gonna walk away though. So as you leave my attack of opportunity range. <laughs> Actually, roll a roll a uh, sanity. Me? I I did earlier. No, again. He just punched you in the head. Yeah, now you're just stupid. Go for it. <laughs> So as he walks away, I'm going to make a, an attack, an unarmed uh, attack. Okay. Uh, mine... Where are you? You don't have one? Seven, break your ace. <laughs> if there is none there, it's 1d20 plus your strength plus proficiency. Uh, which is 5. All right, so strength will be... Uh, three. Oh, I'm eight. Let's roll. D20. 
So it'll be 18. I'm going to use Gunslinger's Dodge. That's a bonus action. Which I would have. No. No, because it would be past your turn. It'd be after your turn. Wait, hold on. Gunslinger's Dodge, is that a bonus action or is that a reaction? I believe Gunslinger's Dodge is a reaction. Okay, so it's 22, or however much oh, you have. I can use. Yeah. So it misses as Claudius gets right, walking. I'll use Olaki. So okay, roll, roll your yeah, roll yours again. Okay. Now can so, I walk away? Yes, yes you can. I'm gonna go to Hendrick's room. Okay. I'm gonna walk up to Rick. Is Rick still crouched down or is he standing up? I guess I didn't actually get to pounce, so I'm gonna crouch down yeah, and put my arm I, around. I guess crouching didn't do anything for me. I'm gonna crouch down and put my arms around my arm around your shoulder and say, "You'll get him next time." Meow. And stand up and start walking. <laughs> so, Claudius, as you get there, uh, Hendrick, you hear the knocking on the door. As Hendrick gets up. Uh... This is this was a long rest, right? So yes, yes, it is. Okay. And you all, so, you just see all the spider webs the moment that your eyes open. Hendrick is slowly getting up, and as he brushes the cobwebs away, uh, like he's looking at his hands, like, uh, how is Hendrick feeling right now? Because I'd say he um, feels really good. You're not bad, but that arm that cast the first Dorian still has your veins sticking out with kind of like this deep purple. Like normally your wounds would have healed, but these look like just the inside of your arm has the purple veins instead of blue. Okay, but otherwise it's like if people are not really looking at it, it kind You're of... You're good. Like... Yeah. Okay, so as Hendrik gets up from the bed, like uh, what does he see like directly around him? All of the stuff that was once there is shattered and broken. Uh, there's a little bit of, like, dried blood on there, probably months or years old, and it's just kind of decayed on the, um, wooden planks. You notice that if you probably walked in some of the corners of the room, your foot would sink in, but other than that, it's pretty structurally sound. Now, at this point, Os Oscar leans against the wall. What happens? You're leaning against the wall? Yeah. That's As Hendrick there. also I don't fall through the, the wall. The no. knocking sound. He's going to just like uh does the door open <laughs> inward or outward? Uh inward. Okay then. Uh who is it? Claudius. Take a step step back as uh Hendrick like uh starts to fiddle with the door and uh I guess he swings it open. Um, you notice that one of the hinges actually breaks, but other than that, it still moves open. Everything looks a bit downtrodden here. I think everything's aged a little bit. A little rusted. A little bit seems a bit more than that. Does Oscar still have the cobwebs on him? Yeah. You Can haven't you spent much time to get them off? Here. Okay. That's good. Uh, Vandal, you'd have heard the knocking. Muted? Uh, I'm not muted. I'm not muted. Yeah. Would slowly rise up, I guess. I assume it's also just covered in cobwebs. Yes. Is this bed, like... When you lean on the, like, left side of it, you feel like the couple boards snap, but it doesn't fall in due to it being a double. So it has a little more sound structure to it? Alright. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Then I slowly get to my feet. Start walking towards the door. Alright. And, uh. Instead of opening the door, does it look like I could kick it? All doors look like you can kick it. 
All right. <laughs> I'll just go to kick the door. Cool athletics. <laughs> yeah, that bitch comes off the fucking hinges and you just all see the door slam down onto the ground. <laughs> Walk out, just brush my shoulders to get the cobwebs off. <laughs> well, now that we're all uh, reunited here, something definitely changed. Yeah. Something's awfully weird to age like this. Or it to might be basically overnight. Have we been sleeping that long? Is there any way to get a gauge of how of how long it's been? Uh, for you guys, about eight hours. Yeah, so I have one of those pocket watches that always tells the time. I guess I'll check that and see. Yeah, it looks as if it's about eight hours and twenty four minutes. I'm gonna close the pocket wash and put it back. Oh. We can always see if our host is just as distressed as we are. Yes. Let's go look for him. Yeah, we need to see if anybody's here. Well, considering all that reckless earlier, somebody should have came up here by now. Do we notice so, anything in the room as we walk in? Uh, over the ledge, you see way down there, it looks as if there's four bodies along the walls, all with their heads down, and they look like they've been stripped down. Then one in the center that looks as if it is burned and it was bound. What is it in the center? Any of these bodies look remotely familiar? Um, this distance, can't quite tell. Jake's gonna start approaching, so... He's gonna go, I guess, down the stairs, it looks like? Well, but the closer you get, Vandal, yeah, they do. And Drake, when you walk up to the first body that's sitting there, you see that it has really pale skin and cuts along his body as if they just tore from the inside. This body here, right? Yeah, and his head's still down. Like, the hair's covering it. So, uh... I guess Hendrick's going to, like, you know... He's gonna crouch down a bit and take a look at the face. That body. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's invisible. gonna crouch down and look at the face. When you do, you see your own face with a bullet hole in the middle. That's... Disturbing. Can I walk down the stairs as well? Yep. Um, yeah, so Hendrik, you are staring at yourself. And you slowly turn your head to notice that it's all of you guys. I'm gonna walk over to my body. Yeah. Hendrik is going to, uh... Like, he's gonna check his own corpse, as gruesome as it may be. They literally have been stripped of everything. Okay, so basically it's just a naked Hendrick on the uh, on the ground then. Yeah. Damn. Did I notice anything on Claudius's body? There's a bullet shot, like a bullet shot right through your skull, yeah. Um, Vandal? Just one. Um, it looks like it's very, very burned... It's hard to tell what it is. As you like tilt your head underneath, you see the embedment of the symbol that appeared on your head for the longest time. Do I notice anything on Claudius' body? I said they've been stripped, so no. <clears throat> what about the, do I notice any Investigating his own body. How how old? Like how far gone is the body? The decay on them looks as if it's been a few months. Now, what did you say, Claudius? Do I notice where the Omni Stone was? Yeah, there's not one there. 
all of you notice that when you're walking through it. There was there is no omni stones on any of their arms. Hmm. Yeah. So basically, it's like uh, this area. It's as if they are. I guess I'm gonna tell everyone that hey, did it's it's as if they've been like like this for a couple of months. Surprisingly, they're so well preserved. Hmm. Do I notice any like animal tracks or anything? Uh, there's been some that look like they've been eating on Rick's body, but. There's metal inlays on where his arms are. He has four of them, but two of them are torn apart and destroyed. And then you can also see a tiny bit of static that's going off as if that's what scared away whatever animals were trying to eat on him. Your guys' bodies, they don't look like they've been touched all that much. Oscar's is a little bit... Uh, doesn't look like it has a lot. He doesn't. It doesn't look like he has imprints where the um, demon armor has yours. What do you mean, demon armor imprints? Because it seals onto your skin, like it actually cuts into your arm oh, to hold it there. Oh. oh, okay. Yeah, there's none of that. <laughs> Guy's a pussy. Doesn't even fuck. Hmm. This is the point where I kind of wish I had resurrection to tell, to like really find out what exactly happened. But, you know, don't have that. <laughs> if only the dead can speak. Wait. Hmm? Um. Can I, are we on the main floor by the front door? Yeah. Yeah, hold what on. What do I notice about the front door? That it's broken. Shattered. Walk outside. Um, when you're doing that, you actually see a man walking down the path. Uh, Out he's worry. outside? Yep. I'm gonna walk out to him. Back inside. Hello. Back inside? He just walks past you, but he does say back inside. I'm just gonna walk back inside. And I'll be like, and who might you be? Yeah, uh, looks at everybody seeing the two bodies. Indrik, get all your friends together. We had a lot talked about. Yes. You, it's, 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 it's you. It's been. Hendrix just like kind of like oh like he's just wide eyed right now. We're gonna walk towards Hendrix. About the same time as you all are getting ready, you do see it looks as if a man like clad in white looks as if he's very holy in he nature. Looks he looks young. <laughs> Do I feel a disturbance in my Schwartz? Hey, sure. sure. <laughs> Hendrix, you know this man? Yes. But <clears throat> he's my teacher. I assume he's fine to follow then. I. Professor. You he, he doesn't seem like he's answering, but you do see a. Uh, the one tilt his head back at you to see what's going on. So, where are we heading now? Looks like they're going downstairs. I don't know if I added the basement, though, to be fair. Oh, I did. Cool, cool. Alright, well, I'm lost. Where am I supposed to be? Just walk down to the stairs. Before we go too far, maybe how we talk to them. Uh, so you see uh, the man in white cross his arms he looks honestly a little stern and pissed off but what all happened yesterday 
yesterday. Mm. I recall meeting the original owner of this mansion, but before. Wait, repeat that again. Before. Before that, I recall being in the Temple of Seven, or not the Seven, but the Temple, the Cherry Blossom Temple. And before that. Do you mean it was on the train? The train to going toward Bant City? Or is it after that? What happened on the train? Long story or the short version, Professor? Wait, was it is it Meryl no. speaking right now? No, it's the other one. Okay then. Well in that case, uh the long version or the short version? We have time. Apparently well, years of it. Years? Do you what do you mean exactly? Go ahead and explain. Oscar is going to ask, when are we? Apparently, this is year 1357. <laughs> While the structure was made in 1400, and then this state would have been in 1702. 1702? What? What? Hmm? The structure decays in 1702 and is this. And we all died in 1702? No idea. Well, is it 1702 right now? Does Claudius also have purple veins? No. Okay. I didn't know if that was just Hendrix. Yeah. Yeah. It's just Hendrix, I guess. So, so you mean to say that the bodies I've just examined are bodies. And this is sometime around 1702? No. This is year 1357. 1357. But all the structures decay, this one specifically, in 1702. So you're telling me that time sped up while we were here? He just waves his hand. Oscar, Oscar's going to, he's, Oscar's gonna say, so, it's currently 1357, but the structure is aged as if it was 1702. Correct. When we were at the flower temple, half of the temple decayed, and the people we met there said it was us. So I think we decayed the mansion. So Just by being here. Wheel. Oh, I was waiting on you all to elaborate on what happened on the train. Well, sorry about that. Just, well, well, if I recall, we did fight this, what was her name, Lilith? Uh, on the train, there was she was sealed in this uh, coffin. It ended Should up being we... released. And uh, as far as I could tell, I thought I blasted her to smithereens. I'm not sure if she really did live, though, but... Then we chased another warrior and summoned an Endorian. And the Andorian was too much of a bitch to kill him in one hit, so he cast Invulnerability. And then he summoned Ouroboros, and then Ouroboros Ouija'd us. The end. I feel like that was the part that he was probably asking about. Yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah. 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 So. Ouroboros, Ouroboros told us to fix it. Don't know what he meant, but he said make it right. Something is not right, then. And here we are. Well... So that was your side. Mm. 
Paul, what's he, yours? He looks over at uh, Vandal and Rick. So those three have that story. What are yours? I mean... What do you mean, our story? <clears throat> Piggybacking on the rest of what your group says is not the way we do business here. Either you all agree or you all disagree. I don't understand. What are we disagreeing I assume about? So I guess we. I guess. I guess he's talking. You're talking about like we each have our own side of the tale, right? It's I more so I that here? everyone needs to agree that that is what happened. Especially when there's someone messing with time and thoughts. Well, everything that I could see, I was in a train cart with Hendrix. And then, I don't really know. All of a sudden, he just throws a bunch of magic at that wheel. I see a bunch of flashes. And then, some gigantic beam pops up, tells me to fix it wake up yesterday in this house which looks perfectly fine have a beautiful breakfast which i'm assuming i'm not gonna have today we had dinner we didn't wake up here we teleported here that fella, yeah. it was my breakfast it was the first meal i'd had that day and then now we wake we go to sleep and we wake up here with to find our own dead bodies rick over there seems to see cats again and we see you. God. So, wait, you said know. Rick is seeing cats. Oh, you were asleep for that part. Yeah, Rick sees cats again. So if we can I do something to turn around that. and immediately just like, just like, just like, uh, puts his hand on Rick's head and uh, attempts to do this. It will make him see normal people for the rest of the day as that purple energy scatters around the room the moment you cast a spell you see uh the man pull out a fan and just creates a dome around you all as the energy courses about and breaks into some rocks well that's never happened before that's awfully new so that's my story Hendrix and i were in the same train cart I don't think anyone else may have saw anything, but that's from my understanding. I don't know if anyone else has anything to say. That's what I saw. But who are you? Um, Hendrix keeps referring to you as the teacher. And well, I'm referring wise. to him as teacher, yeah. Yeah, he referred <laughs> to me. And I don't even, <laughs> Mr. In the White, I don't know either one of your names. Hendrick, what do you do? Let's see. Remind me what a wet willy is again. You flick you flick finger your finger and then you stick it in your ear and twist the finger. Well, first of all, does actually does your tongue still work properly? It does on him. He's not talking, and I don't know why. Wow, that's being so machinist right now, dude. He's got a wet finger in your ear. What do you do, Hendrick? I mean, can I dodge the wet finger? Before it actually gets in my head? You can roll an unarmed attack and then you can roll literally just That's it. Do you hey, how do you how do you know? Do you have eyes in the back of your head? Yeah, you're focused on watching your boss. Yeah, don't I get a you got a what attack of oppor or not attack of opportunity uh advantage? Sure. Let's see, how do I let's see. I don't have unarmed attack on my sheet, so... <laughs> he uses a, his second lucky for a nat 20. <laughs> no, I didn't I didn't use a lucky. I got a oh. uh, advantage with the attack. Oh. Oh! <laughs> you you got it right here. here what the hell? I, got that, I got that finger in there, dude. And I'm oh, what the hell's wrong with you? As Hendrick is just <laughs> flailing about. Oscar's just gonna laugh. <laughs> He's gonna laugh. He's gonna laugh like a I'm, cat. Look, I'm meow, sorry. Meow, 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 meow. He's laughing at cat. <laughs> I'm, 
I'm sorry. I saw an opportunity. I had to take it. Dude, what the hell is wrong with you? We're not school children anymore. Isn't he your teacher? <laughs> He's now, got you there now. Know my teacher. I'm... So anyway. Hedrick, as Hedrick looks back, it's like... Um, I need Rick to make a wisdom save. A wisdom save? I. Right. Once I find my sheet, I just closed it. <laughs> Two sheet after doing one. <laughs> yep. So, Rick, you are slammed against the wall and you just feel your arms get bound. And your mouth completely covered. Now, if we're done with the childish games, this is more important than being a hooligan. The world is literally dying around you and this is what you're doing. If you want to keep playing that game, then I could send you to some place where you can live out that utmost fantasy for years. He uncovers your mouth. Is that what you want? Rick doesn't say anything. That's Oscar's going to apologize. To answer your question, Claudius Moore, right? Guiding Moon is how I read. The name is Vereen Serix. I am the owner of the Tree of Life and the current Prime of Novix. And what you all did has created a wormhole through all of time and space, and the ley lines in this world are destroying themselves. What happened here isn't just because of you. This is because of whatever was brought out. Well, Ouroboros was brought out. And what and is Ouroboros? And he told Ouroboros? us to go fix it, too. But... Wait, what did he ask? And what he is Ouroboros? Us, like, okay, at this he... time, Oscar is going to mind link everything You're, he knows about The Ouroboros. moment you do that, you fall over. He, but does he get the information? No. no. His mind well, cannot be tampered. Nor imprinted like that. Link? I can't no. mind link with him and talk? No, because it is a feature right. called mind blank. Alright, well then I guess I'm just a drooling case on the floor. No, no, no. It like stuns you. You fall over, but then you can stand back up and like ask what the hell that was if you wanted. Because the reality uh, is, it's just something that happens due to the his natural I'm, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna like I want Oscar to look really confused and he's gonna like point at the guy and then point to himself and he's kind of like squinting and then he's gonna point to Vereen is Vereen this what's his name Sarah Vereen he's gonna point back to him and Oscar's gonna He's going to kind of put his hand uh, like so his thumb and fingers are on his jaw and like look at the guy still squinting and be like, I can't reach your mind. The mind is a fickle thing and the moment that you let it be up for grabs for anyone else is when you die. So yes, you cannot reach my mind. Uh, he's he's going to be confused and he's going to like mumble and just... I'm just going to approach Oscar and just put an arm on his shoulder. I don't think what you can do uh, can... Uh, yeah. Oscar's going to put his hand on and just be like, I... That's the fastest way I have to tell you about... I'm going to point to the professor and be like, can I... With you? You see him uh, look over to Vereen for a moment. Then he's lifts up the eyepiece and you see this uh, kind of a seal on his eye as he uses another, like, bit of magic to press to it. Go ahead. So I'm gonna mind link everything I know about Ouroboros to him. I'm gonna try to. So and everything we know about Ouroboros, he should know. You see him pull down this eyepiece and it starts glowing as magic goes about and hits the ground, and it shows all of your information to everyone. And then I'm gonna point to it and say, yeah, that... 
That's pretty cool. Um, after it does, he gonna... lifts it back up and puts a little magic back on his eyes so it doesn't act up again. Then I'm going to point to my my red eye, and I'm going to ask him if he can do that to my eye. No, it's just a simple piece of tech that you can get in. Um, well, if you were in your own time, about four years. Huh. Okay. Four years. Oscar's still, he's, I, I just, I really want everyone to like, while he's listening, I still want Oscar to be like very confused and just like, because this has never happened where he couldn't mind like, like this has never happened. So he's, he, I, there's just no comprehension of what just happened. So he's just like, what the fuck? Like, you know, he just doesn't. He's Oscar. He's someone who you just simply can't do it with. That that's all it is. He's you could say he's immutable. As um you see Vareem looking at it, he uses some of his magic to replicate the face that he saw. And uh he slowly turns like this small magical globe in his hand that he made and He's looking at when the skin broke away of the Endorian showed the uh, face. This is Varsh. Varsh. So that it it he doesn't look like the Varsh I remember though, or at least recall. know what you guys did or how it was awoken but we this is a little bit more pressing than I initially thought didn't you guys wait who is Varsh he's the person that do you remember when I that at that cherry blossom temple they just everyone that was there was fighting against Varsh Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It was the fifteen heroes of the realm versus one man who tried to end it all. And the issue that I now see is that whatever this is, well, that you awoke has brought you back to that very moment in which he fell. For what reason? Well, so my question is: Do you know any way for us to? Or any recommendation on how we're supposed to go about fixing this? I do have a few ways. Currently, the ley lines that are across Pantheon and the rest of the world are currently unbalanced. Back when I was creating the weave around the world to protect it, we sent out a whole bunch of people that would set up the ley lines in a certain area but to not tell anyone where exactly they were at the exact point. That way, if anyone's mind ever was fractured, they would not know the rest of them. I only have the general areas where they are. Here's the issue. The one up in Somerset has been cured. I've already been there. Glacial Palace is still up. Quebec, the Steam Barons. Mallet Center has been cured. Junction City... Bant City, the Bane Coast, Port Royal, Atlantis, Kamigawa, Zenith Temple, the Cherry Blossom Temple has been cured, Naraku, New Mecca, and the Egypt's Second Sun Monument, Cairo, and the Pale Isle are all still there, uncured. When you say Naraku is not cured? Well, we have someone dealing with that, so count it as cured. I see. So, I see. What's the uh, what's the closest city to us that's here? Well, there's currently two. There's well, a few. The closest that was cured is Malin Center, thanks to Gregory Merle. It was one of the first things I did when I felt the disturbance of everything, and when time started being manipulated, I was able to tell and then put it all there. It's under A team. Hold on, Wait. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oscar's gonna hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, so you right. guys, Oscar's gonna say you guys know how to traverse time and space. Not entirely. 
No. Okay, okay, but have you traveled through space? Are you speaking about... You see, we went on an adventure and we had to go through a bunch of different, I don't know, they were like bridges or thing. I don't know, they took us through space. It was weird. So plane has shifting, yes. So you know, so you've been to other planes. Yes. Now this is very, very, very important. He looks over Do to the room. you know about where cats? They just both look at you like, what the fuck are you talking about? Anyways. <clears throat> He's just going to kind of sink into himself a little. You said you, man. these places were cured. How were they cured? Well, what I saw oh, in my place, very May second this, when the ley line is disturbed, there is a crystal that forms underneath the earth. Normally what we called soul stones back in um, Japan when I visited there. They use them for machinery. And when it forms, it slowly starts malforming until it is blessed by whatever natural eldritch power comes. And it makes things much like those. And he points to your arm. I see, but... As Hendrix, like, looking at his arm, it's like... The only reason like... you are not dead due to what you've done is thanks to those. So this is the only thing that's keeping me alive, then? It's what's keeping you all alive. You will feel the effects of the, man of the time eradicate your body if you were to ever remove them. He's talking about the gemstones? Yeah, the Omni Stones. Now, uh, we all have different places we need to be. Right now, we are going to fix one of these problems here. The issue is, the structure will remain destroyed. What happened to the owner last night? What happened to him? Is most likely under the effects of what would happen to about 400 years coursing through their bones. And what about the bodies of us? Unsure. Not quite sure why you're all up there. Or why you were brought and killed. It wasn't even... I'm right now, I'm in a much younger body than myself. It's been about almost 30 years since I've been like this. Bream uh, pressed his hand to his chin. Who here has their original body? And Drake is just... Yes. He looks to everyone else. I suppose I would. Original body before going here. Did you have any form of transvergence in the past that changed you? Oh, well, now that you put it that way, yeah, I've changed. <laughs> I'm hoping to change again into something a little more festive, meow. You mean from coming to this building the first time? Sure. It's more under anything that has affected you throughout time itself. Anything that's well, they... shifted and created at least two of you. Then yes, this is not my original body. Okay. What I... about you? He looks over to Rick. He's gonna shake his head now. So nothing has changed your body in any way. Uh, with, with being partially mechanic, being mechanized, with, does that count? Or I suppose that would be the case. If I they mean, did a full system I change, thought, yes. I 
thought he was asking about the original, like, oh. is this your original body? Oh, okay. So he, but... would have, he would have shaken his head yes. Okay. The only one that, that was your isn't... original question. Yeah. And the only one who isn't that way is you, correct, Hendrick? As far as I'm aware of, I mean, I would say that I've experienced, at least myself, Claudius, and Vandal, we experienced the effects of time, but... Can you show me your arm? I... yeah, if you're okay with that, as Hendrick slowly approaching. So... He will walk forward, and when he tilts your arm over, he pulls your sleeve up, and you can see that it's coursing through where your Omni Stone is, and then scattering it through as it slowly looks like it fades out. I don't know the reaction, but that might be keeping you alive. Whatever might that you cast to break the wheel, or summon whatever that was, and due to the transversions happening right afterward, you may be alive just thanks to the magic you've poured into it. Do you think this is a scenario where we're going to switch bodies again or maintain these? If you switch bodies again, you'll switch to them, as he points up to where the bodies were. Because I'd really like to maintain my youth if that was possible. The way you are now is most likely your final body you'll ever have. So we'll just re-age over again. Exactly. Or you won't age at all. We don't know. And I've never interacted with stuff like this. I'd like to find a way not to age at all. Hendrick's gonna look at Meryl. T Professor, tell me. When you picked me up, what year was that? Well, I found you in around 1450 or 1500, uh, not quite sure, but we went to Malin Academy and it isolated your body for a while. You didn't age while you were there. I should have told you all this, but Malin Center doesn't even know about Malin Academy's hold on time. As far as I'm aware of, the rest of the world believes that Malin Academy was completely destroyed. That's what they are said to believe. And is it still there even now? Not in this realm, no. It's a piece or a branch of Novix, which is what Vareem holds over. As long as the Prime's there, we can go to what he deems demi-planes to get to Malin Academy. On the outside, if you are close enough to somebody who goes there a lot, you'll see the body of what is there. When you enter, it's just a facade. You'll see the town and everything on the inside, but it's not actually there. The moment you leave, you go back out into the realm. So, to answer your question, yes, Malin Academy is still there. I see. It, well, that's a, that was quite worried for a bit, as when I was back in... What was exactly that name of that city again that we were in before we were going to Bat City? Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz, yes. Back when I was when we were in Santa Cruz, I thought that... Uh, I thought it was strange how nobody, how everyone said that was like hunt. It was there, but it was gone for hundreds of years, and yet, well, at least it's still there. Yes. But still, though, I'm just that answers quite a bit of questions, you could say. But at the same time, what happened to my parents? From what I read, and what everything was involved with, when you joined the Academy, you joined out of the fruition of being gone from your vor Aurora Vortalis, yes. They, I don't know if you've coped with it, but they're gone, Hendrik. And they have been for years. So the town's no more, then? 
Aurora Vortalis still stands, but Ravagers attacked and they didn't make it. No matter what way I went back to try and help you so you didn't have to relive that, they always were targeted. Don't know why. There's nothing that signifies why. My brothers and sisters, all gone. And I... <clears throat> Hendrix is just kind of sulking at this point. <coughs> Oscar is going to look to Hendrick and say, it's okay, buddy. I'm here for you until you turn 18. 18? I feel like I turned 18 soon, but I don't even know what... Oh, I don't even know at what... This point, at there. this point, Oscar is going to dramatically lift his finger and look Hendrix straight into his eyes, dead into the windows of his soul, and say, right now we're both negative years old, so it's legal, buddy. God. And then he's going to put his hand back down to his side. About. He's going to put his hand back so. down to his side. He looked, uh, you see Gregory actually like pull up uh, this long like metal piece that's around his wrist. Technically, if we were to go by the time when I first saw you and first got you in, enrolled, you would be almost 19, actually. Yeah, Oscar's just going to like throw his hands up in the air and say, alright, fuck you, bud. It's been <laughs> well over that time that you stayed in Malin Academy. Your body will still be around age 17 to 18 now, but the year that you were there, it didn't change. I see. Hmm. I always did, always did seem a bit strange, but still. Well, Professor, any thoughts that you have on like considering that you seem to be also wanting to fix you know or cure these places uh well, we may have how we go about it well, we may have a way of fixing it but uh he turns and looks at Bream. Bream's looking at Vla uh, vandal the pendant what about it did jowry and orvine give you that Oh, um, Grimbeard. He did. Then you're Hold taking on. his man mantle, then. Meaning you're I the did. one. That means that you're the one that's going to have to go to the Pale Isle. Uh, ho Oscar. Very possibly. Uh, hold on. Let me. I'm gonna walk up from this pillar. Can I see Vandal? Am I yeah. to do this alone? Do, do I hold on, hold on, I see Vandal. Do I see the pendant on his neck? Yes. I, I'm gonna point to his stomach and say he fucking ate that thing. That might be the reason why his body turned back to what it is. Those pendants hold a lot of power, if you did not know. They're the only ways you can get to Atlantis by unifying all of the warlords to go there. To be granted a gift from Poseidon himself. So outside of this omni I'm gonna look at Oscar and be like, see, it was tactical digestion. It's Omnistone. I'd be dead right now. Shh. Right. I now Vroom, wonder if the only stones are. Well, I personally do not know. All I know is that it's a different form of magic altogether. I've only seen one person ever wield it, and they've long since disappeared. Is it one of the 15? No. This is something that a woman I met who tried to be invested in Novix, who only got removed forcefully. Mm. She is a doomsayer and will bring on the end times. And she's not one that I wish to go to battle with. What's it's her not name? Azalyn Delo. Does Claudius recognize the name? Yeah, we all do. That's Rick's mom. Oh, I was gonna say that's what I was thinking. It was talking about Rick's mom, but so 
Rick's mom has what to do in this? She's a doomsayer? That's what he called her, yeah. She uses powers from something cosmic. <laughs> unnatural. And the way that I see those stones is that they are quite the same. What about the purple magic from Hendrix's arm? Is it the same as that? Now that's the old magic of the Arcanist. It's what turns people into Endorians from what you all have encountered. So, so you're saying Rick's mom put a gemstone, an Omni stone, in all of us? No. No. I don't know how you all got yours. You all may have a story for each one, but... But they're similar to her power? They are similar in nature, yes, in magical form. So my question... <clears throat> is there a way to utilize these Omnisounds to learn more about... Just... There, ha there has to be more that we can use these things for. If they kept us alive, and they're clearly very powerful. Well, from what all I've seen is that each of you have been given something by it and it may force something in return and I know for a fact that when you have them you're able to see a world unseen I heard about a story from you three he points to uh, Claudia, Hendrick, and Vandal a place called Oriel's Deep is what came up yes it, something they brought out was of this same magical validity only, it was a bit underwhelming, as if it was being pulled back to whatever it came from. Tried to trace the signal back. There was nothing. Hmm. It led to the cosmos and disappeared. Hmm. You all have better information on what has happened while you've had them, and what you've seen. Please enlighten me. One of the we so I grew up in a native tribe. <clears throat> For me, everything comes down to meditation and worship. And the weirdest things that have came is a connection to it's like a small temple. And there's doors, there's two halls with doors on each side, and so far I've only been able to open correct me if I'm wrong, one door. Two actually. They open two, open two doors. Three actually. Is it three now? Yeah, yeah, you had three because the last one he cut you off. Oh yeah. So three doors, but I couldn't get inside the third. Um, I can show you one of the things that have came from that. If you want to find. I have no concern about that. I, I believe know. that. Something like that may have been brought about by your inner mind, your beliefs, followed by the Omnistone's influence. Have he asks uh, Hendrik, have you had something like that occur? Same for you, as he looks to Vandal. Hmm. I, hmm. I. It's been a while that I've had this stone. Now that he think more on it. Hedrick remembers exactly what the... Can I roll a history to, like, a pinpoint the exact moment that Hendrick found out that he hasn't... That he gained the Omni Stone? Yeah, you remember it because you killed a monster and then found it. Yeah. It's a big monster in Oriel's Deep is what you got it from. Yeah, for Hendrick, that was like... He literally got it from the death of a monster. And, uh... At Oriel's Deep. So... In his case, he gained it essentially as a spoil of war. Um, that was where he got his Omni Stone, but he's not sure about the others. But have you had any mental influence from it? Places that you've never been? Realities that never existed? Something that helps your thoughts? Anything? Well... Unfortunately, it you could say it was before I got my Omni Stone. You could say that I was uh, 
I like. I guess I don't know, but what was his name again? Hmm. There was someone. There's someone that left a bit of himself, uh, a bit of his essence uh, in my mind, that helped me regain clarity. It, when I was in Oriel's Deep, I do remember that uh, I was affected in such a way that I kept forgetting things. But this being, whatever it was, helped me remember, kept remembering all of it. But... Where did you say you met him? I guess it was, uh... I guess it was sometimes after I entered Oriole's Deep, but before I got the Omni Stone. Was Rather... there... Anything, any characteristics about him that may be known? Well, he always did disappear with a bit of white thread. And strangely enough, it was... Hendrix kind of like putting, like he puts a hand, uh, his hand on the chin and, uh... Can I, can I pull a history check for me to remember it? Because I can't remember his name. Oh, uh, it was Ulmric. That's what he Ulmric. called himself. Ulmric the Traveler. He called himself Omrik the Traveler. Uh, does that name ring a bell by any chance? No, but White Thread seems as if a characteristic that I've seen before. It was around Stonehenge. After there was a magic, there was a relic there buried underneath, and it disappeared. And all that was left is the white threads. As far as I know... As if fibers one... running through the air. Yes, that's exactly like fibers. It was definitely... Like, whenever he appeared, there was always this bit of fiber that came about. Is in it, fact, it was... That's that all that you all have seen. Oscar's gonna look over at them and say, I've never... Has have I ever seen the fibers? I don't think we ever saw them. Yeah, you have. Uh, then Oscar's gonna say the white fibers come from Hendrick from time to time. That's probably due to what he's been influenced by. But the fibers could have ori originated from somewhere else. Where have you seen them? Mm. Coming, coming out of him. It wasn't coming out of him. Only once it was that case. But where, as in location-wise? Oh god, um, we were on a boat in the ocean. I have no idea where in the ocean we were. In, when was this happening? Remember when we got the Widowmaker ship and all those white threads came out of Hendrick? Hmm... That's the only time I remember the white threads. That's literally the only time. So Would it have been oh, we were right on... after getting the Widowmaker? Or time after? When we first got on the Widowmaker and took it over, and we found out that um, Tozen was the son of the Pale King, and then we saw all those white fibers come out of Hendrick when he tried to touch something or do something. I don't remember what Hendrick did, but he tried to, like, yeah. find Tozen. And then yeah. the white fibers came busting out of him, and I was like, whoa. Out of Tozen. They came out of Tozen. Oh, so then they came out of Tozen. That's what I'll tell them. They came out of Tozen. Aurora? Yeah, that's the one. And then I'm going to look back to Vandal. I think we were on our way to Santa Cruz or something at that point. Where, uh, did uh, Rick say that? No. No, he's he's got his mouth pretty well closed. But seeing as he isn't gonna say it, I guess. Oh. I also saw those threads. The tree. Rick actually couldn't see the threads himself. Oscar was the only person who could see the threads. Oh, what I'm the only one that saw the threads. That's true. Because Oscar and Hendrick. Magic. So then, I guess Oscar will say, uh, also. Where were we with the poison tree? Um, it's where I got the ceiling dagger. What did it look like? 
What, the tree or the dagger? The dagger. You oh said the God. fibers were coming off of that, right? If they were coming off the tree. Were they coming off the dagger? Yeah. I would say they were I'm hovering around. Yeah. Uh, where's the picture of the dagger? Because it's not in my sheet anymore. Because I lost it. I really want that dagger back. Okay, I want two things out of this campaign. Um, that locate object actually works. So then I just I don't have locate wall. object. Um, so the only there, times you've seen it was this person, Omrik the Traveler. Did he have any distinguishable traits about his face and body? No, I can't he even. He was find definitely a... quite. I would say maybe in his 30s, I guess. But he also, his hair was a bit frazzled, also white. It's almost as if the white threads came from his hair itself, I would say. And even though it was You're also mixed. saying that you saw them off Tozen Auroran. Yes, I, I would say that. And from a blade that came from the Pale King. Okay, um, at this point, Oscar is going to pull out his journal, and he just has colored pencils on him. Wait, did, were there threads ever around the Pale King? Because I don't recall that. No. No, no but they the blade was from the uh, Pale King. Like, you all know it was the Pale King's blade. You didn't look for threads around the Pale King. I mean, this is meta-wise, but you didn't... You wouldn't have seen him. Like, there's none from him. Yeah, the Pale King doesn't have any sort of threads around him. So there's only one... rational... reality to this. And he just waves his hand, like, for you all to... pretty much connect the dots. We have to kill the Pale King. I hope that's what we were supposed to connect. Where did I mean, the fire come Hendrick from? Hendrick would really like to do that, but I'm not sure if that's quite the answer we're supposed to go to. The answer is... Who is making these fibers? And how are they in your head? So who created the fibers? Hmm. Rick's mom. No. I know, I just wanted to... I just <laughs> wanted to be part of this. Hmm. I mean, it seems like Omrik the Traveler used them, but I'm not sure if he actually made them. And who's Omrik the Traveler? The Pale King. And Rick is say, shaking his head. They're definitely not the same person, no. And yet you all saw fibers coming from Toad and Aurora. You see him just with his arms closed and his eyes like up there like... Really? Really, guys? That's all he's thinking. So it's Tozen. Dude, I have no idea. Rationally, that would be... Tozen has a lot of treasures. Perhaps if we can somehow <laughs> contact... Him. If he is the one that was at Stonehenge where the fibers were left, that would mean he is the one getting all the old relics and sealing them inside himself. Mm. I always had the fear that the grandson of the Pale King would end up going through with some dark deed. So does that mean we have to kill Tozen? Is he following the footsteps of his father? Actually, wait. Is Satis, How close was I? Is Satis still the Pale King right now, or is it not yet? Uh, at this time, no. But whatever you all said has set him on a journey to the Pale King. He was going to be the Pale to be King regardless, though. If only there was a way to keep him away from it. I... I was hoping that Kamicho would at least realize how much burden that Satis is under, but we I all... guess I can't change that perception, huh? You all will deal with that when it comes time. That magic is connected to your Omni Stones. 
but right now we have temporal disruptions to manage. As um, for... Um, hmm? can I, while he's doing this, can I pull out my map? Yeah. I know this seems very random. Um, it's under handouts. Uh, yeah, map of Northern Pantheon. And we are where exactly? Island. And how close is that to where I did a burial? Um, burial. Oh, uh, it was over by Steam Barons, a little further north. Um, the f the places that need it handled right now, with the entirety of all these disruptions, is Junction City, Bant City, and Cairo. Me and Gregory Merle are going to go to Cairo. I'd like to go to Bant City if I could pass through the Steam Barons. What exactly? Jun Junction. I'd like to Junction City. I'd like to go to Junction City. Question: That time when we were on the train with the uh, with the ma with that mayor, the, the Mason Bant. What year was that? Uh, I don't remember the year that we have in place for the campaign, but that year, it's like fourteen or. 15 something so we're so we're still in the past then correct mm. but there is something going on and the towns are appearing here through time and they don't even know junction city included claudius you already said you want to go to junction city we need others to go to band city What's in Bant City for Oscar? Is there anything in Bant City for Oscar? I mean, is there anything in Bant City for anybody other than this shit we have to fix? Yeah, but that's I mean, unimportant now. Um, it's saying that we're back in the past. We don't. We technically don't have bounties at the moment, so it's like. Well. So he looks at Oscar and uh, Rick. Which one of you two is magic? Me. He uh, points over here for you to stand there. Oh, okay. He points you there. want me to travel to Junction City by myself? He holds a uh, finger to Hendrick, moves him over to uh, Claudius, like he just points over there. You. He points down to Rick. Points over by Oscar. And he looks at Vandal, and he points over to Hendrick and Claudius. Right. Are we going on adventures? He starts walking off as Gregory just stands there. Well, I uh, think that's decided on where you're all going. Oh, I don't know which city I'm going to. I don't really know where I'm going. Am I going to the Pale Isle alone? No. He pointed for you to go with them, as he points to Claudius and Hendrick. And... Claudius wanted to go to Junction City. Oh, so Man. we're going to Bant City. Okay, 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 yeah. okay, okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. Process of elimination. Oscar's gonna pat Rick on the shoulder and say, "Adventure time." I'd like to make an important stop at the Steam Barons, if you two wouldn't mind. Well, there is currently a rift there on the ley line, so that would be well as to do. Let's go this way. We had to follow Vareem. All of us? Alright. Oh shit, hold on. I'm not on the right side. No, I oh, have a oh, question. I'm... I'm coming. In fact, can they hear me? Yeah, they can. Is there any trains in this time? Or are we going to be walking on foot or horse? Or what's our options here? You're walking. Alright. Is there any way to get some gear? Why you have everything on you that you need? Bodies have a shotguns and stuff again. No. Nope. <laughs> no. <laughs> I have my I have my bow and my daggers though. I would just like a way if I could. Well, I can make some more arrows on the way. To be fair, I think whatever we currently have now is like better than the current timeline right now. On top of it, oh, Junction shit. City. Junction City has a market. Do they have bullets? Yeah. We can make our own bullets. I uh, cannot make bullets. Oh. I do not know I how. I hear Oscar. Do I hear Oscar say that? Yeah. I can make you some. 
just tell me what you need. And Rick is lagging. Fire. I can make it. Yeah, you have to go up to get off the break in the screen. Basement looks familiar. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you see Vreen put his hand over the top of the well as you just see a crystal slowly raising up. And it looks like it has really strong magical properties as he forces what looks like the same magic that Hendrik uses into it. The purple magic? Yeah. Oh, this dude's a fucking enduring. And as this guy? As that happens, uh, his name's Vareem Sarek. Vareem. Oh, who did? Who, uh, which Endorian does he become? None. <laughs> so Sus. you see his fingers like start crackling, but then they slowly start healing as this like radiant light is around him. Yeah, you have your spear still. Yeah, all of our your glaive on us. We have it with us. Yeah. Robert, you can just talk. Everything you're carrying is mostly better than what we can get elsewhere. Mostly. Vastly, vastly. Yeah, go find another and <laughs> one like that. Um, so you see him forcing the magic, and when his fingers start crackling and the veins start showing, the um, skin starts sealing back while this heavenly light is around him. And a sigil appears on his chest that looks as if it is of a, like an emblem. And when he does that, you see the lay, the entirety of the crystal turns a brilliant white before it just starts spinning. What's the emblem look like? Um, it is, it's nothing like you've seen, so, but, um, I don't remember the logo, but he sees you looking at it as he starts... Moving the crystal back down. It's the sigil of Novix. What is a Novix? The realm I reside over, watching everyone's actions. And there's no werecats there. It's a demiplane. Only those I want there are there. Now what I just did... He's gonna write that in his journal. No werecats and Novix. What I just did was put a little bit of magic on the ley line that mends this area. And it mends the steam barons, thanks to that. Now, all you have to do in is focus a little bit of magic into it. It may take a little bit of strength, but... Once it's healed, you can return back on your mission. Make sure it goes back where it came. It may take a while to find each one. But that's is fine. There, is there it's some sure. magic that helps us get locate the general area then, perhaps? You'll, you'll be able to feel it. Now, as for the general location, I already told you. Thanks right. for the injunction, city. Did the crystal already go back down? Yeah, it went down, and it looked like it disappeared into the rocks. Hmm, okay. Hold on. So we just have to inject a bit of power into it. Don't we? Didn't we take some things from Tozen? Or have some from Tozen? I just run up the stairs. Oscar. Yeah. What? Don't we have a map that belonged to Tosin? Yeah, on the fucking Widowmaker. It's on the boat. Is it on the boat or is it on Oscar? It's on Oscar. You never said it anywhere. Oh, then yeah, I have Tosin's map. We should probably take a look at that. Hey, wait, 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 wait. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna... Ver Vereen Vereen? Vereem. Vereem? I'm gonna pull out Tozen's map and ask him to look at it maybe. He walks over and looks at the map. 
these. I'm putting an ATM. These are all the ley line locations throughout northern and southern Pantheon. Why do you have this? Yeah, uh... Is there a way... Tozen. Um, Tozen gave it to me. Tozen gave it to me. Tozen. What did you say Tozen's real name was? Sadis Aurorin? No, no his... Uh, Tozen no. is Tozen. Sadis Aurorin is his grandpa. Yeah. Who mentioned... Uh, what Tozen, was Tozen's real name? Tozen Aurorin. Tozen Aurorin. That's his real name? Yeah. I want to point at the state yeah. barons on the map. And say you mentioned there's a rift there. It's there's a mark on this map. Yes, Where the but are. well, what I just did fixed that. Okay, so Oscar is going to like, I guess, put the map back and tell him that Tozen Aurora gave it to me. Did he give it to you, or did you take it? Did I take it? Yeah, you took it. <laughs> I, I took, it. took it. I took it. But yeah. why does he have ley lines? I don't know. I was hoping you could tell us. That's why I pulled it out. Because I didn't know what the map was before. But now I know they're the ley lines. That's all. Well, that makes things a lot easier for us. This is... All the locations are points where we try and keep balance in the world. They got disrupted when you all broke through the boundary. So we have... What we're doing now is going to repair them. But why he had this, I have no idea. And I will look into it. Cash but, money, dude. But... If this is the way that it's going to be... We need to do this as quick as possible. So, instead of my initial thought... We will have to have you all split up. You and Rick will go down to Bant. Those three will go to Junction City. We will meet back up. And... And... Uh... Oh, God, this is really hard to see. Um, I mean, we will... really want to get this done quickly. We could send us all five to different places. And you could, if that's what you want. I think we should do it in groups, guys. It would take us longer. I mean, I just want you to think it's just, it's you, Hendrick, and Claudius. You don't have two tanks that will face tank everything for you. I can't, yeah, I can't tank anything. Claudius can't tank anything. I don't have any armor anymore. Anything I had that was armor related is left on this ship. Yeah, so I think it'd be best to go in groups. Uh, Where do we need to meet back up at? I'm sorry, he didn't say that yet. Uh, he was looking at the map. I found the right one, by the way. Here. That's the bigger one. Um, write it down for everybody. Oh, yeah. That's better. Okay. Thank you. So yeah. where are we? We're in, we're in Highland. We're in the Highland right now. We're in Highland, so and I have to go to away are we from the Steam Barons. We will meet back up at the Steam Barons. There was a city there. It's through the swamp. You will end up finding what looks like a very large machinery-based town. Now, I don't want to alarm anyone, but it sometimes isn't located in the same place. Would we be fine? Going through the steam barrens? You said you fixed it. I would not go through a swamp to get there. And I know that the way when Hendrick decided to head out toward a certain area, that he was able to use his magic to get here. What I say you all do is for you three to go as close as you can to Junction City and then head there. Yeah, why don't you three teleport? Well, I guess I could go to Malin Center. I've you never better. been to Bant City, though. Junction, you've never been to Junction City? Times. He looks over uh, Gregory Merle say, 
You been to the Kansas City? Uh, it w but we haven't really gone there much, to be fair. No, but remember, think back to when one of the first trips we went on. We stayed in a cabin about four to five miles out. You remembered the tea flavor that the lady gave you. Remember that place when you are heading out. All right. I'll tr No, I'll do my best. I'll do it. I will do that. So Oscar's going to look to the professor and the other guy and ask, uh, we're quite a long ways away from Bant City. You got any way to help us? Well, I mean, I could go, we could teleport to Malin Center first, and then I could probably try my best to get as close to Kansas City as possible. Well, Rick and I got a split. Yeah. And that'll just destroy so, everybody. Um, can, we're going can, near. Can they help Rick and I get to Bant City? Or do we have to just walk all the way from Highland? Let me look. You it's see... Like you can do it twice. It just hurts. Yeah. But yeah, you totally don't happen. think you will not be able to do it twice. It affects it affects yeah, it infects your stuff. Um they look at you. We can send you down to El Paso. So El Paso. All Otis right. really wants to go to the Steam Barons, but I'm assuming it's better to go to the Steam Barons after we go to Junction City. That's where you're gonna be heading afterward. Okay. So yeah, I guess if they can get us to so Oh, that assumes can Rick only teleport? If you, if oh, only... but have you been there before? Yeah. I've been to Bant City. I've also been to um You've oh. not been to Bant City. You've been to uh the Gale which technically is like between El Paso and Springdale. Where did I buy my first um, clockwork bear at? That was in Dover. Highlands. And Highlands. Highlands. Dover? Oh, Hi no, it was Highlands, Highlands. Yeah. 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 You're at the here. Highlands. Where? It was here. You bought it here. Which I guess it wouldn't be hmm, that far away. That's where. From the, this is actually where we met you. It actually Austin. wouldn't be that far from the Gale to. Um, Band City. I'm sure there's. Well, is El Paso closer than the Gale? Yeah, technically. Well, let's just go to El Paso and get some Tex Mex, brother. I heard they got wonderful food. Andrew, do you think you can get us somewhere? Yeah. As, uh, Hendrick is going to, uh, well. It's time now, isn't it? As Hendrick looked over to Meryl and uh, Bareem. If we're in a hurry, I think we better get going, right? All right, auto close. We see uh, Vareem start channeling magic over toward the side. Claudius uh -huh. would like to look at Rick and Oscar. Oscar will tip his hat and brush the cobwebs off finally. Claudius is going to tip his hat and say, be safe, boys. We'll see you in the Steam Barrens. Bring me some food. Uh, we'll be in touch. I'm going to flick like a couple coins at each one of them. I'll pick, I'll pick, I'll pick the money up. I'll take all I, the money. Yeah, I'd like to flick a couple, little bit of money to them. I'm taking all the coins. Not, I didn't say all. No, all the coins you flick at us, I'm taking. <laughs> it's two. I flicked two. I take two coins. Okay, I give Oscar two coins. <laughs> <laughs> I will subtract two money. Two money? I get two Think money. Think about it. For money purposes, what, like, we, this, the money was still in circulation still, right? Like, we, they, yeah. they're still, okay. Yeah. yeah. That, I, that's think it's more, I think it's more the excitement of the principle of the, the hat tipping moment, like, the screen what is it called the screen goes to like a widescreen view and then you just see him like oscar tips his hat and claudius does the same just be safe boys and just flicks a couple coins and at that moment poof there's just a blink 
Oh, your name changed on the fucking roll 20. Wow. Mine? No. Look, it's not Vandal Gold, it's Vlad Gladden. I don't know about uh, this money being worthless if he went backwards in time, though. Anyway, uh, so Oscar's going to walk over to where they're channeling magic. Huh? What? Right there. Oh, what if it does have a mint date and they're like, what in tarnation is fake money? <sighs> That's my headcanon. We can't use any of our money, boys. Unfortunate, unless... You can use your money. <laughs> no, no, I won't. I won't use my money. That'd I don't be trust like a it. dollar. This ain't it's gonna get safe. you shit. <laughs> it's not safe. I can't use the money. Hendrix's going to like before he you know does it. He's like he's quickly going over the the paper money that he's got. <laughs> you only lose about three hundred dollars out of it, like for both of you guys. Okay. So. You see Gregory Merle uh, watching Dreamcast. I'll see you all soon. As he just pulls his hand back, and you see both of them disappear. Right now we're in 1357. Yep. Uh, yeah. Okay. Because most of the uh, most of the huge wads of cash was was old mint. Because as far as I remember, the money was. Uh, the money was like pretty much just sitting there for years and yeah. was not in uh, circulation for a while. It was in circulation here. You're good. Don't worry. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. In that case, it's time to, uh, I guess it's time to go as uh, Hendrik, uh, you, you see Hendrix start glowing around him as, uh, as this happens. Let's so, go. so the entirety around you three just starts scattering through, and you see what looks like a forest surrounding you. As in an instant, you all disappear and then reappear. That's where we're going to end half a session. I will be back. They're currently lost, and they're about to become. Very different so through time. They re they're going to reappear in different locations. We'll find out what happens next on Chronicles of Pantheon. <laughs>